Hello, and welcome to this first corporate case study at the ACT Annual Conference from wherever you're joining us today. It's day one of the Annual Conference, and I hope you've already found some interesting sessions. I'm told we have over 1,800 delegates from 53 countries, which is really fantastic. I really enjoyed hearing the keynote talk from Dr. Parag Khanna this morning. It's really interesting getting an Asian perspective, and it's certainly not one I hear very often. Today, we're going to be talking about intraday cash management, and it may seem a really odd topic to cover, and probably of more interest to a bank than a corporate. However, it's been an area of interest to me for several years, and I know I am a treasury geek. And when I was told that by the events team there was a case study in the topic, I was really keen to participate. So over the next 30 minutes, we're going to hear how F. Hoffman LaRoche has unlocked value for the treasury team and the wider business community. And I was particularly taken by the impact it's had on patients, especially during a period where we've become a lot more conscious of the importance of the pharma industry. Now, before we get going, a bit of housekeeping. Uh, audience Q&A, always really important to us. So what you should see on the toolbar at the right of your screen, you will see about and participate. Please send questions in uh, during the session and you can choose to be anonymous. We'll try and answer these as we go along. A reminder, this session is being recorded and should be made available for replay on this platform by the end of the day and to view over the next 30 days. Do get engaged with us on social media. We have an active LinkedIn groups. You can follow us on Twitter at uh, ACT Update and tweet using the hashtag ACTAC21. Now, before we start, let me make some introductions. I'm Naresh Agarwal, and after over 30 years working in Treasury, and I provide policy and tennis support here at the ACT. I'm really delighted to introduce Stefan Windisch, who's the Senior Cash Manager, Treasury Operations. Stefan, can you tell us a bit about yourself and the company, please? Hi, Naresh. Hi, everyone. Thanks for the invitation and having me on this uh, discussion. It's, it's very, very nice and very pleased to, to be around. Yes, uh, Roche is a, a pharmaceutical and diagnostics company. Um, we are located in Switzerland, in Basel. Um, uh, we have had uh, sales last year uh, of uh, 58 billion Swiss franc. So we are a true multinational uh, a company. We have a bit more than 100,000 employees worldwide. <clears throat> and, and we are present in 150 countries. Just a few numbers. Um, I'm, uh, as you said, senior cash manager. I'm overseeing the uh, European region uh, for all uh, operational uh, cash management uh, questions, bank relationships, uh, any kind of processes between the, our entities uh, in Europe and, uh, and banks. Um, we have uh, a very centralized treasury approach. Um, so we do all our treasury operations out of Basel. So we have no local um, treasury functions anymore. And over the last uh, almost two decades, we have built an in-house bank, um, which is now serving uh, almost 250 uh, of our entities around the world in, in, in a bit more than 50 countries. And almost uh, or a bit more than, than, than 30%, so 82 entities are already bank free. So that's something which is uh, a development of our in-house bank. And this is, these are the entities where we're looking into the intraday statements now. So you, so you said, how many countries are bank free? Countries, I cannot say, but 82 affiliates. So it's... it's I have external uh, bank. Exactly. So those, those, those companies don't have their, their own bank account anymore. Uh, their banking partner is the in-house bank of Russia, and we basically act on their behalf for any kind of business case they, they may have. Um, so coming to uh, the bank statement topic. So of course, this is, uh, it, it is a key thing. So the bank statement is giving you the truth into your treasury uh, system with what happened in your bank account. And of course, um, Roche has went through the same challenging questions as, as, as every other corporate um, with just seeing liquidity and, and in particularly the inflows as soon as possible and as early as possible to adjust um, uh, the cash management accordingly. From a payment perspective, we are actually quite uh, well aware of what's supposed to happen because uh, these 82 uh, affiliates, for example, they don't also have no online banking anymore. So they cannot surprise us with payments. So we can say that a huge extent of the payments we know, so we can act and, and, and apply our short-term funding accordingly. Where we were lacking a little bit of information was the collection side. 
Um, now having the situation of, of uh, 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 interests on, 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 on credit balances with bank accounts, but what is more a driver for us is the actually the counterparty risk to not exceed certain levels with a certain bank, with certain uh, funds uh, in a certain bank account. We were trying to look into the, the, uh, the solution uh, to understand how we can get this information faster. It started with uh, a pure treasury uh, question. So that, 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 that's clear. So all corporates are looking into this um, and there are different solutions out there. There are APIs, there are MT942s. Uh, these are, I think, the main ones. You can do manually, just go online and check and then adjust and, and, and assume what's going to happen. And Stephanie, just to interrupt you again, apologies for that. No when we talk about intraday liquidity, is, is that one of the problems that I've certainly found in my career where money is coming in and going out, but the bank is basically throttling my ability to pay money out because it's still waiting at some point during the day for money to be coming in? Uh, I, I would say it's, it's more the question really just knowing from, from where the money sits. So let's, let's just assume the, it's always easy in, in the euro area, actually. Um, so we have one zero balance euro cash pool, as probably a lot of corporates have. So at the end of every business day, we are pulling the accounts and the funds together. We also fund the accounts, let's say in Spain and Italy, all over. Um, but only at that moment, we actually see the funds in the header account, which is the one we manage. All the entities' accounts across Europe are zero, but the main account is the one where, where, where the liquidity lays. And, and because it, this, this transaction happens only during the end of the day, we actually just see it the day after. Um, so very likely colleagues in Spain and Italy and in Germany, they would see that they have made uh, a lot of collections, um, but it would require a manual process to update us to, to understand that at the end of the day, there is a, a collection coming from Spain, from Italy or from Germany. So it was really just getting, getting the access into this. Mm. Okay. Um, so that was, that was a bit of the, the, the challenge. And we started with just this treasury perspective of um, how can we ensure that when the day we see these collections with the yesterday's bank statement, uh, we actually, we, we're not breaching the counterparty risk and, and, and we were looking into solutions. Um, the, the, the two main solutions with API and with MT942s, uh, we looked at MT942s is something which we also use in other locations. We use it in, uh, uh, in, in, in for, for Russian ruble, for example, but also for the US dollar, just as an information, um, as an information report. And of course, it would have been possible for, for Euro as well. And, um, and again, sorry, Stefan, uh, an MT942, what is it, what information is it providing? Uh, an MT942 is an, uh, is a payment advice or payment or credit advice statement. So it's basically an update or, or what, what happened during a certain time frame, typically during the day uh, in your bank account. So it is, um, it, it is an information. Consider this to be more a report. You can see what it is, it shows you the correct transactions, but it is in addition to an MT940. So all the transactions you would see in an MT942 would be repeated in the MT940 um, at the end of the day. And this is the reason why we thought it's maybe not the best solution um, because it would require a duplicate process. Uh, we aim or we tend to aim for uh, implementing new processes if we can decommission another one. So we need to have a true offset. Otherwise, we just create a bigger machine, which we didn't want to for this case. Uh, in addition, the MT942, the information is valuable, but you cannot use it further than just your treasury perspective. So you can, for example, not push it through into your local organization and say you can start clearing your vendor, uh, your, your customer with this, with this collection entry, simply because it's going to be repeated and the MT942, uh, MT940 end of day, you for sure have to process. In addition, there's also a legal uh, difference. So the value of the MT942 or from a legal perspective is slightly less because items can be changed during the day. So that's a, that's a bit of a difference compared to the MT940. The API solution, um, I guess the term is, is, is widely known. So it's, it's, it is similarly uh, an option to just receive information ad hoc. So you set a, a number of uh, data points which you want to have responded from a bank and, and it works you get this information back 
and you can adjust every kind of frequency, whatever you want. Um, but it is a very customized solution. And again, it is something which is not uh, replacing the end of day MT940. So you can have this information, you can have it every second, I guess. Um, and you have a very live and very um, moving uh, balance. Um, the question is, can you really handle it first? And second is, what can you actually do in addition with this information for us? Um, it was also then a consequence that if you build up this API solution or channel with one bank, you may struggle to rebuild the same channel using the same data point, the same settings with a different, um, with a different bank. So it's maybe, maybe not scalable as much as, a, as, a, as another standard format. And, and just again, picking up on your point about APIs, what I'm hearing then is, is for all the benefit of this real-time view, one of the challenges you found being, you know, covering so many different financial institutions is they're all, is it that they're all slightly different in terms of the APIs and the, the way in which the data is being collected? Uh, to my understanding, there is simply no industry standard in place. It is probably possible to replicate the exact same settings with a different bank. And maybe there are even standards now on a regional level. Um, but we were looking for, for global solutions. So for us, it is very important that if we go for products of a bank um, or a banking service provider, let's say, uh, if this is something which is scalable or at least has the potential to be scalable across the world. And, and what we have now came up with it is, is in the end of the day, MT940 or COM53, both is equivalently good. Um, and that's standard all over. An API or an MT942, probably not yet. So and this is why we went for that solution. Okay. So maybe to, 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 to quickly explain the setup we have. So I mentioned earlier that we have 82 companies uh, where we do also the collections on behalf. Uh, it's about 37 of those are in Europe. So that means with Deutsche Bank, we also use their product uh, uh, called Virtual Ibans. Um, and we collect for these 37 entities centrally. Now, virtual IBANs work that the entries are actually reflected in a physical bank account or in one physical bank statement. So and that, was the, that was the starting point for us. And that was the account we were interested in, to begin with, at least. Um, so we have one bank account, uh, which is a Eurobank account at Deutsche Bank. And that bank account shows to 99% collections of 37 entities, 16 countries in Europe. Um, so, and I can imagine that the traffic in this account is relatively high, typically also towards the, the month end. And it is very easy to oversee funds in this account and then basically preach. Um, so this is where we started, where we approached Deutsche Bank and said, look, how can we change that? Um, and the aim or the, 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 the response and the, the, the result of the discussions in the exchange with Deutsche Bank was very clear. So, if we manage somehow to just multiple and, and, and replicate the process of the MT940, um, then this is the ideal solution. Um, and now this is what we are live with. Uh, we use now for this particular account the COM53, but as I said, it's, it's, it's just another format. It's exactly the same. Uh, COM53 intraday. Deutsche Bank offered us um, to receive the statement every 15 minutes. So in a frequency which is relatively high, and then you can really um, discuss whether a higher frequency is needed and manageable for your organization or not. We receive it actually three times a day only. So we receive it once at 11, once at uh, 1 p.m., and then at the end of the day at midnight um, for this particular account. Now, in consequence, or what this statement shows us is simply the transactions at 11 o'clock, what happened between midnight and 11, from one o'clock, what happened from 11 o'clock to one o'clock, and then from at the end of day, from, from 1 p.m. to the end of day. And as of now, only the end of day one considers the, also the sweeping. So during the day, we build up a balance, and, and at the end of the day, it's going to be cleared. And this is for us a solution which surely covers the point of just seeing the funds coming in. Uh, but on top of this, it allows us to distribute this statement into our local organization for them to make use of this information literally half a day earlier. And it sounds so little. And, and to be honest, I was also expecting not the feedback I in the end received from my colleagues locally. 
but locally it changes actually quite a bit. So from our perspective, and that's the feedback from many different locations in, in the ROS organizations, the credit managers have told me a challenge for them is to, to unblock shipment orders for customers which have basically not paid the previous one or a few previous ones. So they do a kind of a risk assessment, a rating of customers, and only in the event that the customers paid, they start shipping. So now if they receive this information in the past, in the morning for yesterday, they basically missed one day. As of today, they receive it half a day earlier and they can instruct the, the shipment of this, of this new order earlier. And that's quite important. Uh, of course, we could say now, okay, now we deliver our medicines faster or our diagnostic systems faster to, to, to the patients at the hospitals, all fair. But this actually is the same for every other corporate which is selling stuff and which has a, a comparable process. Uh, on top of this, um, it also helps the debt collectors. So they understand earlier who paid and they can basically, they, they avoid unnecessary calls or unnecessary processes to, to initiate. Another rather impressive advantage is that uh, during the uh, end of month, when all the reconciliation starts, it's, it's always very hectic to get the, the bank numbers into the systems and to understand what actually happened. Um, also from a, from, a, from a, if you then uh, go up the, the hierarchy in the organization, everyone wants to understand what were the last day's sales. You know? And these kind of answers we can now provide with a certainty that it happened. Um, and uh, we also increased automation throughout the, the entire uh, process chain because, uh, of course, credit managers were trying to understand who paid. The way they did it is that they went in the online banking, they looked, they probably even unblocked uh, shipment uh, orders themselves manually to then in the, the day after to just basically correct the entire, the entire process. Now the statement comes in, it's gonna be pushed through our systems and the entire clearing of customers happens automatically. So I think this is a, this is a big, big step forward um, where we, I would say almost accidentally, quite deliver value back to the organization um, as, a, as a treasury function. And, and this, is, this is what I was surprised myself, but of course I'm very happy about it. And, and just sort of picking up on some of the things you've said, Stefan, when you talk about pushing the information down to local affiliates, is that, I think when we talked earlier, you were talking about you use uh, SAP as a, an accounting system. Yes. So can you just tell us a bit more about how that actually works in practice? So you're getting the information through... Yes. SAP, you're collecting it exactly. So, so we have uh, we have a full SAP uh, landscape in, in our organization. So, the majority of entities run their own SAP instance. Some of them are at the same instance as as, as our treasury organization. Um, for the majority of, of uh, companies, it, the, the treasury system sits on top of the local entities, and we have the communication connected. The treasury system is the one system which is the connection to the outside world, and when it comes to bank-related questions. So we see the payments, we see the, the, every kind of instructions which we send out, and we receive in turn the, the confirmation of payments, the, the, the bank statements, any kind of feedback coming back from the banking sphere. And then... Um, it is basically our system translating that information into a payment order or into a, uh, just puts it the, the bank statement into a container and, and sends it down into the local SAP instance. And in the local SAP instance, again, then the, there was the, the, the invoice recorded, the invoice which we sent out. And then in return, when the bank statement is processed, the, the item is identified and the customer can be cleared. And, and every other process basically is then building on that. So we're talking about on the straight through processing, straight through to a customer account being updated, I guess, exactly. three times a day? Three times a day, yeah. So that, that's, that's the big advantage of, of having uh, basically an already existing standard as an, as an MT940 or even a COM53, uh, where none of the codes actually changed. So the, the implementation of this was almost a plug and play. Uh, everything which needs to be adapted was like certain jobs running during the day uh, to process a statement. Of course, we expect, or in the past, we didn't expect a bank statement to come at 11 and 1 p.m. But now it's just uh, like scheduling the jobs properly, making sure that information becomes available. But this is it. And this is why we believe uh, we can scale this technology or this, this, this process into other banks. Um, and... 
it, it, I expect it to be possible simply. And uh, it's, it's maybe the, the, the easier discussion or easier challenge with another bank rather than having a discussion on, on exchanging additional MT942s or making, making them work in our system, starting reconciliation processes or even uh, establishing an, an API setup with a certain bank and trying to convince them uh, to use our standard rather than their own standard or a standard of another corporate which is banking with them as well. So you've gone back to, I guess, MT940s have been around for quite a long time. So yes. rather than invent something new, you've gone back to doing using something relatively old fashioned, but just speeding up the frequency and embedding exactly. it much further through your systems. One of the things that I, again, I thought was really, was really cool was um, you were telling me at month end sometimes uh, a salesperson can log in in the morning uh, and can check if they've been paid and could actually contact um, the supplier, the, the customer and say, and know before month end is closed to actually have a conversation about trying to close that during that month end or quarter end or. Exactly. Uh, I mean, now, now having this, this, this statement as a solution in place, it gives us lots of alternatives and lots of options. So we can, of course, uh, discuss uh, how can we uh, make use of an increased frequency. Are there certain days where the frequency should be higher than three times a day? Uh, uh, can we focus on certain accounts? What is the impact? Technically, it's possible because it is the bank statement of an individual account which is just coming in. And uh, the beauty of this really was that, uh, I mean, our cash management runs in, in SAP. So we don't have a treasury management system kind of attached to it. So. We were loading the first statement, the first in the test environment into the system and the numbers were changing. I said, like, well, how is this happening? And then we were loading a COM53 for the first time. And I realized that there is additional information provided, which is which our SAP system was kind of waiting for. Um, and, and this was, yeah, it was like eye-opening uh, situations where you said, wow, this goes in the really right direction. Um, and uh, I think there is a lot of potential um, and yes, there is an, it is an old fashioned way of receiving a bank statement or let's say a, a cash position. But the, 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 in particular, the COMT formats, they have a lot of potential. There's a lot of information contained. Um, and I think receiving this from your bank account is, is rather straightforward. Using this within the banking world, there's particularly many banks in a, in a certain instruction involved. I think there is most information lost. Um, uh, but there is lots of potential to really also uh, make, make, uh, receive more information and make use of that. I think part of what I've really enjoyed about this story um, and what you've done, one is you've given a lot of choice now to the sales teams that, that you're saying that there is data there and it's accessible and they can then decide how and what they do with it. I think the other thing I've taken away is I spend a lot of time talking about payments and we talk about enhanced payment data and the, the benefits that will come of having more data. But it sounds like for you, by exploring the sort of CAM 53, that enhanced payment data is there already. All you've done is actually just find a way of retrieving it and doing something useful with it. Exactly. I've, I, I think the information contained in the statements is, is, is a lot already, but it's not, there's no one makes really use of it. Um, and uh, I mean, the payments and collection side, both sides. Uh, I, I think the COMP 53 is the better statement for sure. Uh, still the COMP is not uh, compatible, uh, particularly within SAP systems. So between two different SAP systems, you have to have certain conversions running, which is a bit of a, a difficulty which is easier with MT940s. Um, but for sure, this will, this will be overcome at some point. And the thing is, again, it is a standard. It is a standard for SAP as a, as a provider of ERP systems. And it's probably easier to look into such questions rather than trying to find solution, a general solution for, for, for other formats, let's say. Um, on the payment side, I mean, just as a, as a side note, we, we use GPI for corporates already since a while. Um, and also that, of course, gives a lot of information uh, uh, back to us, you know, with just providing the, this, this tracker ID from the beginning and delivering this already with the payment uh, uh, instruction to the, to the bank. We can actually track all the time what happened uh, with the payment to the end. 
Um, and we can see and we, we know it has been credited at the beneficiary side. We, we know information beyond that it has been just debited from our side. We know it has been credited, it has been converted. We know the exchange rates, fees, whatever. Um, but we have this information and, and on that we can build certain intelligence and, and, and also make use of that. So presumably, as you talk about the use of Swift GPI, um, that must be quite useful for your accounts payable team if they have uh, suppliers ringing saying, where is, have you paid? Um, yes. So presumably they can give more definitive information than you're on the next, you were on the payment run, should be there tomorrow exactly. or today. Um, sometimes, sometimes the question is really just understanding the caller because they may have received an amount converted with some fees deducted and you just don't recognize the number they see. With the, with the GPI the tracking uh, infrastructure, you can see how or which amount has been uh, uh, credited when it has been converted by whom to with exchange rate um, and, and which fees have been deducted on the way. So, um, second, we've got some questions and I'm gonna I'll just fire some questions. We've got about four minutes left. Um, how do you handle the fact that Swift messaging, like MT 994 or 940942, is not standard, even though it's supposed to be, i.e. each bank is its own interpretation? Is that a problem for you? Uh, for the MT940, it's not a problem. For the MT942s, we just read out the information we require um, and we, we don't do much with the content. Okay, so this is going back to the, the CAM 53 has the more useful information. Okay. Yes. Um, do you plan to extend the use of the solution for payables? Yes, we do, we will. Um, and this will be a bit of a, of a challenge um, simply because we don't differentiate uh, our accounts in pure debit and pure credit accounts. Um, and since we have this high awareness of our payables, um, we need to see how we do basically the archiving of this information. So to avoid the double counting of a debit intraday. So that's going to be a challenge. Um, on the other side, uh, I, I said before that we only use the, the sweeping uh, process as of today, only during the end of day. And also that is actually something Deutsche Bank is already offering to include this intraday. So to basically have maybe one, maybe two uh, uh, sweeping processes intraday and consolidate the information. And I guess if that is, is, is in place, then even the, the archiving of the, of the payables can be automated. Okay, super. One of the things I always find confusing is about time zones. Um, do you have sync issues sometimes when the cutoff time is midnight um, so you might receive the money at two in the morning, but it's not visible until the following day. Um, I mean, we do. It's, it's hard to answer because we're covering the, the, the globally the, the the setup, and we have uh, the, the Asian currencies, for example. We only see the day after, and and this is okay for us. By the time we would see it intraday, it would still be end of day, and we would probably have no chance to. Uh, to do some, some let's say, T0 investments. Um, and for the US, it's exactly the opposite. You know, we see the information for our, in, in our evening time, but we make use of that. So, so there we probably have the last intraday heads up at lunchtime, uh, US time, um, but we react on this and, and we, we take it out. In the US though, we have the advantage that we have the separation of, of, of credit and debit accounts. So if there's an account where we see a balance, we know it's 100% uh, customer collections and, and we, we can just consider this to be a true collection. Okay, super. Um, do you factor in securitized receivables? Um, into this program, is that possible? Um, I, I'm not really aware of that. Um, yeah, I, I, we just we just cons consider basically every every credit being uh, expected. I mean, the thing is, we we don't we don't plan 
collections in a way. So that, that's probably different to other corporations. So for us, the payable side is, 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 is crucial. And on the collection side, we, we just wait what comes, uh, you know, with the, with, with the uh, thinking that we cannot control our customers. Of course, if we have local factoring transactions or so, then, then we know that certain amounts will be, will be coming in. And then we also consider those. Okay, super. Um, we sort of run out of time. Um, first of all, Stefan, thank you very much. I personally wish we'd had more time to explore what you're doing today. It's been a really interesting story. And as I said earlier on, it's not just a treasury benefit, but actually the benefit to the organization more generally. Uh, so thank you everyone else for all the questions. I'm sorry we didn't get to answer all of them, but you can continue the conversation in the event app. So do join in. Reminder, you can watch the session again on demand the end of today and for the next 30 days. Um, you can compare your notes, exchange thoughts in our new discussion zone. Um, I've already been posting some stuff, obviously not for this session. I've been focused on having this conversation with Stefan. Um, visit our virtual exhibition. Uh, please fill in the survey. And thanks for Deutsche Bank for um, uh, sponsoring this event and for uh, introducing this story, which I, again, think is really amazing. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Narish. Thank you, everyone.